What's good, y'all? I did something amazing today. I hooked up my Roland Phantom 06 to the Machine Plus. And I ain't gonna lie. It's not bad. But there's a few things that they could work on, too. Bolo! Before we get started, if you guys need any equipment for your studio, make sure you guys go ahead and click my link in the description and head over to Zounds.com. Zounds has a whole bunch of stuff on the site and they have a whole bunch of stuff on the site that requires no credit or background check. Meaning all you have to do is order it, they'll ship it to you and you can make monthly payments. All you have to do is add a credit or debit card up to the account and you can go ahead and get your stuff just like that. So if you guys need some equipment, make sure you guys go ahead and click my link in the description and head over to zounds.com and get you some equipment today. Also, you guys know I rock with analog cases because they make the best cases to protect your gear and they make the most professional stands to protect your gear as well. And they just released a new travel backpack called the Track Pack. The Track Pack Travel Backpack. I wonder if you can say that three times in a row. But this is the ultimate musician's backpack to travel with. This is a professional musician's backpack. You can put your MPC Live 2 in there. You can put your Machine Plus, your Roland SP404. You can add in your MIDI controllers as well. And you even have a compartment to add your laptop in there too. And everything stays protected because this bag is heavily insulated with nothing but protection. And to make things even better, they have a whole bunch of compartments where you can put your cords, your keys, your cell phones, hell, the kitchen sink if you want to put that in there too. So if you're a professional musician that is on the go, make sure you guys go ahead and check out this Track Pack Traveler's Backpack. I'm telling you right now, you will not be disappointed. Go ahead and click my link in the description to analog cases and save 10% today. All right, so yesterday I finally had time to sit down and learn how to use my workstations with the Machine Plus. And I'm not gonna lie to you, um, it was kind of challenging at first, but then once I got it done, it wasn't that bad. Now there's a few hurdles I had to get past because I'm used to doing this on the NPCs, but once I learned how to route the audio in there and then I learned how to select the MIDI channels, and with that I actually found an issue with my Roland Phantom 06 with the MIDI settings that I had to correct as well. But um, you know, once I figured all that out, I ended up making my first beat using the Roland Phantom 06 and the Machine Plus. And I'm here to tell you, it's not that good. It's not that good at all. But either way, I'm gonna show you guys how I got everything set up and I'm gonna show you guys how I made the beat. And uh, I will put this beat, even though I don't like it, on my Bolo MP3 page so you guys can listen to the beat in its entirety. And uh, I'm gonna do all the mixing and everything inside of the Machine Plus, so it's just gonna be ran straight through as a two track so you guys can hear how it sounds compared to like my other beats I make on the MPC. So let's go ahead and get to that right now. All right, so first things first, I had to get the Machine Plus and the Roland Phantom connected, and I had to make sure that they were talking with each other. So of course I did the normal things inside of the actual keyboard. I turned the local control off or the local switch, depending on what type of keyboard you have. And there was one thing inside the Roland Phantom 06 that I had to do that I don't have to do on my other keyboards. I had to go to the MIDI section and go to the transmit section and turn all of that off. Reason being, when I hooked everything up and I got everything running, everything was still coming through on channel one, even though I was selecting other MIDI channels. So I went and just turned all the transmit stuff off and everything works good. And from that point there, I went ahead and I connected the Machine Plus to the Roland Phantom 06 using a USB cord because that's how I send my MIDI information is through a USB cord. But there was a slight problem with that because I actually had plugged it into the bottom USB and I wasn't getting any type of signal. It wasn't showing that the keyboard was being recognized or nothing like that. And I'm sitting there wondering, I know the Machine Plus can recognize these keyboards like that. It's 2024, and they just did an update this year. Minor update, but they just did one. They need another update. But I'm like, surely they have that type of function in here because before I would use my regular MIDI cables, you know, the old school MIDI cables, but I wanted to use my USB, like how I use on my MPC. But then I decided to go ahead and actually switch the port from that bottom port to that top USB port on the Machine Plus, and guess what? Everything started working. Now, I don't know if you other Machine Plus users have this problem, but for me to get my MIDI to work, I had to plug it in that top USB port. 
which is kind of crazy. Now to get to the MIDI setup, I went to, of course, settings, then I clicked over to MIDI, and then I went to the input devices and selected the Phantom and made sure that the status was on. Now when I did that, I had a MIDI connection because when I played the keys on the keyboard, I seen the pads and stuff lighten up on the Machine Plus. Now we need some sound. I didn't want to run both of these through an external mixer. I wanted to run the Roland Phantom inside of the Machine Plus through the inputs, and then I wanted to output everything from the Machine Plus. So to do that, of course, I ran the outputs of the Roland Phantom into the inputs of the Machine Plus. And then of course I had the output of my Machine Plus going into my monitor control so I can hear it through the speakers. Now I ran into a little problem getting the sound to work, but I figured it out. See, first I thought you had to go into the settings and then go to audio and then select the inputs from there, but that's not how you do it. What I actually had to do is click on the channel MIDI button at the top right there, then scroll over to input. And then on the audio source, I had to select N1 left plus right, so I can have a stereo input. But when I would play the keyboard, I still was not getting any sound. But then I had to remember, the local switch is turned off on the Roland Phantom. So that means we have to activate the MIDI on the Machine Plus to tell the Roland Phantom to make some noise. And then this is where things got a little bit confusing. Cause you would think that it would be like right there in like the home screen or something like that. But no, it's not. It took me about 30 minutes of digging, and then when I found it, it was actually in the output section in the channel MIDI little button, and I went ahead and found it in there, which is kind of weird. And then to make things a little bit more confusing, I had to scroll over a few tabs just to find the MIDI section to where I can select the Roland Phantom 06 and select the MIDI channel so that we can hear some sound. But once I did that, we got sound. All right, so now that we have sound, now we can finally make this beat. But one thing that you have to understand is, inside of the new Roland stuff, they have things called scenes. They're not sequences no more, they're scenes. And before you can even get started making a beat, especially if you're trying to use multiple MIDI parts, you have to initialize that scene. Now on my Roland Phantom 06, the scenes start at bank C, 28. Now you can initialize any scene that you want, but I like to just use the ones that are not being used. So I just start at bank C 28. And then from there, they have a whole bunch of other initialized scenes that you can use and save your sounds and stuff like that. But in this situation, I actually use bank C 29 to make this beat. I'm telling you, it's very important. If you are using these new rolling keyboards, make sure you initialize these scenes. If not, you're going to be pulling your hair out. I'm telling you. Now, the cool thing about the Machine Plus that I do like is since we are in the channel MIDI, we can just go ahead and press a pad and that pad will represent what MIDI track we're on. So as you guys can see, I'm on the first pad and this pad corresponds with MIDI channel one on my keyboard, which is playing the piano. And then if I hit another open pad, say for instance, pad two, and I set my destination to be the Roland Phantom 06, it now plays channel two on the Roland Phantom 06, which I have strings on here. And then if I go to pad three, and once again, select my destination as the Roland Phantom 06, and then it's gonna play MIDI track three on the Roland Phantom, which is a choir sound. Now that's actually kind of cool how they got that set up. We just can go ahead, press a pad, and then we can just pick our sounds and stuff like that. And of course, this is really helpful, especially when we want to do track mutes. Now there's several ways you can make a beat on the Machine Plus in standalone mode. Some people like to make everything inside of a group, then they would copy the group and then delete certain parts out of the group to kind of make their own sequence. But me, I tried to do it a way where it makes more sense and it kind of has like a, MPC style of workflow. So what I like to do is for each sound, I like to assign it to its own group. So say for instance, MIDI channel one, which is the piano, I'm gonna go ahead and use that on group A. And then MIDI channel two, the strings, I'm going to use that on group B. And MIDI channel three, which is the choir, I'm gonna use that on group C. And the reason why I do that is so when it comes time to me sequencing this out, I can just go ahead and mute the groups instead of actually going into the group and either physically muting or deleting parts inside of the group, because I'm telling you, it can get a little confusing doing this. But if some of you machine users can show me a faster way, I'll definitely take you up on that offer.
But to me, this seems like this is the fastest way. Now, I do this the same way with my drums as well. I actually single out all of my drums on different groups so that way I can just mute the groups rather than making all the drums in one big group and then having to go in and copy and paste and take this drum sound out and all that stuff. It just makes stuff so much easier on here. And did I mention that the Machine Plus is straight from this streaming? So if I just add like a snare or a hi-hat or anything, once I put it on the pad, I can play it on my keyboard without having to press nothing. But they do have a handy keyboard feature on here so where you can play everything on the pads as well. But I went ahead and got the beat for you guys and let me show you guys the breakdown of the parts. And I forgot to mention, I used my uh, 2023 drum kit in this beat. So if you guys need some really nice drums, go ahead and uh, click my link in the description and uh, get some of my drum kits. They're all dope. It ain't too bad with that. Let's go ahead and play a little snippet of the beat. All right, so there it is, a quick snippet. It's all right. You guys know how it is when you're testing out stuff like a new beat on, you know, something new like that. So uh, it's okay. But I will still post it up on my Bolo MP3 page, which I do have a whole bunch of beats on there for you guys to listen to. And uh, yeah, for all you Machine Plus users, as you guys can see, you can use your workstation in your sense and make something really dope. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys learned something from it. And like I always say, peace out.